Hi, this is Jeff Tate, and you are watching Chaos Zinni. It is only March, and you've already played in the USA, Australia, South America, and now touring here in the Nordic countries. How do you feel so far? Uh, I feel good. Yeah, the tour is never ending. <laughs> yeah, we go, uh, we tour a lot, you know. I think uh, we're 67 countries we tour in, you know. Yeah, we just have uh, short breaks in between, uh, you know, long times on the road, which seems to work well for me. I like to stay busy and uh, uh, I like to keep the momentum of the tour going, you know, rather than take long periods of time off. Uh, I think it, it keeps me in better shape and keeps me um, at the top of my performance level, you know where if I have a long time off, then it takes me a couple weeks to get back up to speed, you know? And then I think the shows kind of suffer because of that. And maybe it's, nobody else notices, but I do. I'm kind of a perfectionist with that, you know? <laughs> You've been playing three different set lists, two of them celebrating important albums. Many of the fans in the audience grew up listening to these records when they were released, but their kids are discovering them now and going to concerts together with their parents. How do you feel seeing the new generation feeling impacted by your music? Well, it's surprising to me. And um, I just had it very well exhibited to me the other night. After the show, we had a, a, a small meet and greet with some uh, fans. And a man who was about my age brought his uh, young granddaughter <laughs> to the show. And uh, she was reciting my lyrics to my albums. And she was telling me what she liked about them and how they made her feel and uh, I was surprised you know very surprised that a, a kid that age you know could one want to listen to that because it, it's it's very old music you know and um, but I guess uh, I appreciated old music too when I was growing up you know I still listen to older uh, artists that I admire and, and love their what they did and geez people are still listening to Brahms and Beethoven and Mozart you know so I guess but I just hadn't had it exhibited to me in that way before you know that was really the first time of somebody that was 14 or 15 years old explaining what my lyrics meant to them you know shocking <laughs> for most of this tour um, in Sweden Norway and Finland you're celebrating Empire and Rage for Order classic records. Even after so many years and singing all the songs, can you still discover something new or feel something different when you perform them on stage? Well, when we first started touring, yes. Um, unfortunately, we started uh, in 2020, right as the pandemic was kicking in. So we had to postpone the majority of the tour till things kind of changed, you know. Uh, but yes, when we first started playing it, um, I really appreciated the albums a lot more now than I did when they first came out, I, I think, you know. Um, it's funny, but you never really get a chance to play all your music when, um, when the album comes out. Usually you play one or two tracks of the new album and you, and you play most of what people already know, you know. And then the next time you come to town, a year or so later, they know those new songs you know very well so uh, but you typically never get to play the entire album you know so this is a real treat for me as I never got the chance to play well all of Rage and all of Empire um, so now I'm very intimate with all the songs and uh, some of them are just incredible to perform um, and I think it's because of the audience reaction to them you know uh, songs like Jet City Woman, people sing every word, they sing it loud. In fact, I don't need a teleprompter because I can hear them singing and I can just see their, read their lips, you know. <laughs> so I won't forget any lyrics that way, that's good. <laughs> and next year, it is promised Land's turn to celebrate three decades. It is a very emotional and intense record. You've already done one special night playing the entire record. How was the feedback on this, on that gig? Can we look forward to a tour celebrating it in 2024? Um, yes, I'd like to play the album in its entirety. We we uh, played it recently um, in Belfast uh, 
Ireland uh, a couple months ago. And it, yeah, it is a very emotional album, and um, it it has that effect on the audience too. It's uh, it's sort of an introspective record, and I, I'm not sure that it goes over so well live because it is so introspective. You know, I think it's maybe um, I don't know. I don't know yet, honestly. To be honest with you, I just don't know how that would go over well. You know, maybe mixed with other songs, but playing it. Back, you know, each song back to back might be too much for people. I think you might have to lighten the mood a little bit and put other songs in. But somebody was telling me the other day. They said, um, "Hey, can you put together like a a set of your more up music, something that's you know more happy?" And I started looking through all my discography. I got like twenty albums, I think now, and there's like four. <laughs> Everything else is more. I don't know, serious, somber, somewhat melancholy, you know. So I think perhaps I should, uh, perhaps I should write a, uh, a happy album. <laughs> and this year you put some countries on the map for the first time. Oftentimes the schedule is tight and the hotel venue airport route is all an artist gets to see. But you usually like to walk around and see a bit of the countries you visit. What do you usually like to explore when visiting a new place for the first time? I like to see as much as I possibly can. I really do. Yesterday, we were in Stockholm all day long, and I spent all day at the, the Vasa Museum, which is an incredible uh, naval museum. I'm really interested in wooden boat building, and I've, I've had a number of boats throughout my life. And uh, this is a specifically uh, a wonderful museum with an amazing um, uh, just treasure trove of history and historical uh, documents, facts, objects, you name it, it has everything. And uh, But I like to do that. I like to see, uh, you know, uh, well, different museums in different cities if I can. Uh, I like to go to clubs. Um, I like to sample the restaurants and the, the nightlife, if at all possible, you know. Yeah, I, I try to do everything. If it has some significant um, um, like national park or something like that, I like to go hiking quite a bit, so I, I spend a lot of time outdoors, bicycling. I've rented motorcycles before and gone all over Rome and Italy before. Yeah, I just try to do as much as I possibly can, enjoy it, you know. Your third solo album, Pete Sweet Oblivion, is a writing production. How's it been working with Frontiers? Is there already plans for a release date? We have no plans for a release date yet. We're just beginning the project, really. And uh, I hope to have it out by the end of the year at some point. That's the, the, the grand plan, you know. But again, it's, uh, it's art, it's creativity, and you can't always put that on a spreadsheet and say, you know, this is... This is where you have to finish, you know. <laughs> it happens when it happens. <laughs> um, I was watching Mind Crime at the Moor a few weeks ago, and it is amazing your performance and acting on stage, especially the body language. You've already done work as a narrator, and there are plans to adapt some records for the theaters. But would you like to have some more experience acting in series or in the movies, for example? Mm, I uh, have dappled in that, you know in the past um, it's very difficult work you know it's uh, maybe I, I suppose if you did it a lot more you'd get more good at it you know where it would come easy but for me it's uh, it's a lot of brain work and um, physical work that uh, I'd much rather make music to the film <laughs> honestly <laughs> The film that I did, um, the Burning Moor incident, I think it's called, uh, I had to play a part of a serial killer, you know, and uh, I had to really go outside of myself for that because I'm not a, a violent person at all, but I, I really got into the part and I lived and breathed it. I didn't take a shower. I just stunk. My fingernails were black and uh, it, it, it was weird living like that, you know. I didn't even sleep in a bed. I slept on the floor to 
get into the character, you know, because I needed to do that because I'm not a, a, a good enough actor just to switch that on. You know, I had to kind of get into the part and live and breathe it. And that's that takes a lot out of you, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather play music. <laughs> Over the years, your voice and art have inspired fans to create their own music and bands. Nowadays, you share the stage and participate in songs with some of them. Tours with bands like Angra, shows this month with Conception, in which vocalist Roy Khan always spoke about your influence, and the partnership with Tobias in Avantasia are good examples. How do you feel to see and share this stage with so many talents inspired by what you did and do? Uh, well, it's very flattering, actually, to be asked to be part of those uh, um, albums or performances. Um, I typically make time to do that if I can, because uh, honestly, I've, I've come to really enjoy uh, working with other people in other situations. I really enjoy the... the um, I don't know the uh, the brainstorming and the the working together collaboration. You know, I, I love that. And uh, Tobias Samet is just brilliant uh, as a writer and as a personality. He's just very fun to be around, and we get along well. I think, and uh, I miss him. I haven't been on the road with him for a couple years now, so it's. We're about due to perhaps play some shows together. <laughs> I, I hope so. He uh, he's quite a character, and I I was uh, very flattered that he asked me to be part of the last album they did, and I sang a couple songs for that, uh, which I quite enjoyed. And uh, yeah, I'd definitely be into doing more with them, you know. And lately, you've been writing your autobiography, and last year you had heart surgery, which I believe this moment has a special chapter in the book. Reliving and going through many memories in the book, and especially in the recovering from the surgery, do you perceive your life in a different way since then? Yes. I certainly do. Um, I think I'm very reflective now, perhaps more than I've ever been. And uh, I'm, I'm, I really enjoy the moments you know, a lot more. Uh, take time to notice what's happening around me and uh, and how I feel at any given time. I'm keeping track of that more now rather than I think uh, I'm guilty of sort of living in the future of like trying to get someplace, you know. And now I'm, I'm very uh, comfortable and, and enjoying being in the moment, you know, enjoying that. You have many active projects and products like Insania Wine, Backstage Pass Travel, where you are a tour guide with your wife, not to mention merch, touring, and making more metal records. Yet, you found time to produce something you always wanted, a jazz record. How has the production of this project been? Yeah, I, I, I don't know if I have enough music for a full record, but I have a lot of instrumental pieces of me playing saxophone and piano, and um, I've done some things with uh, other musicians and made some recordings with them. Uh, but I don't know if I want to release that at this point. You know, maybe when I'm a little bit older, maybe. <laughs> it's very different than other things I've done, you know. It's a step in a whole different direction, and uh, I'm really enjoying the direction I'm in now. You know quite a bit. Jeff would like to leave a final message. Oh I just say thanks to everybody for listening to the music and uh, I hope to see everyone at a show soon. Yeah that's it.